Senate Finance Committee will come to order. Remember, it's April 29th. And for the record, we do have a quorum. So we have two bills before us. Senate file 2269 is the claims bill. And welcome, Senator Anderson. How are you? Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to bring the claims bill, the annual claims bill that comes every year. Uh, doing well and looking forward to uh, presenting Senate file 2269. I, I, uh, maybe to get the bill in the way it should be uh, properly uh, described, we should uh, bring in the amendment to the, the bill, the A210175 amendment. If someone on the committee would move it. Madam Chair, I'll move the A210175. Thank you, Senator Benson. Uh, members, that has been posted and emailed for you all. On that motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails. Amendment is adopted. Senator Anderson to the A21 amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. The A21 0175 now puts the bill in the way it should be, and it basically speaks to the different uh, claims that were brought to our claims committee uh, back on April 7th. Uh, the total amount of the claims is $248,356.28. And I have with me this morning, Madam Chair, uh, the uh, legal counsel for claims, uh, Mr. Jason Keenley, who uh, probably could explain this better than I can, although I could go through it, but I think he's got a better uh, handle on all the things. So if Mr. Keenley would be uh, open to that, that would be great. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Senator Anderson. I appreciate that. Mr. Keenley, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record. Madam Chair, members, um, Jason Keenley, Senior Assistant Revisor and Counsel for the Subcommittee on Claims. Um, as Senator Anderson said, um, I can walk through the, the amendment that puts the claims that were approved by the subcommittee uh, into the bill. The first, um, uh, first claim was a, an exoneration claim that comes by a statute through uh, Minnesota statutes, chapter 611, uh, sections 362 to 368. Uh, and this is for Nicholas Mark Peterson, and that's $108,684.65 um, for a claim that he was exonerated from. So um, I can go through the, the details of this, but his, his claim, or his what he was sentenced under was vacated by the court, uh, and he spent 572 days uh, in prison and 220 days on supervised release. And that is the, uh, the claim is the statutory minimum for that amount of time, plus the attorney's fees um, for the, what happened after that as far as moving the exoneration forward. The remaining claims are injury claims from the Department of Corrections. These are sort of treated as worker, workers' compensation type claims because they're, they're injuries that happen while the, the inmates are doing um, work within the, the system. Um, so there were $1,180.63 of reimbursement claims for medical expenses for, for three injuries uh, that happened during work release. Uh, a uh, claim for, to Nicholas Edwards for $3,940 um, for permanent injuries to his right index finger while he was performing assigned duties. Uh, a portion of his finger was crushed in a grommet machine. Uh, he was rushed to the hospital where the hospital staff determined that the proper treatment, treatment was a partial amputation. Uh, the amputation equals a 5% in the workers' comp system, um, again, or $3,940. Uh, the next claim was uh, the Stephen Cole K claim um, for permanent injuries to his left hand while performing assigned duties. Um, Mr. Cole K lost his left middle ring and little finger, um, and there was significant damage to his index finger when his fingers were cut by a beam saw. Um, the workers' compensation rating for those injuries was a 26.56% rating, uh, which equals $28,581. Um, there was some lack of history and um, some complicating factors in his work with his work history, um, but his his disability is significant enough that the the 
uh, the subcommittee gave some wage loss, um, and to calculate that, they, they doubled the amount um, of that injury and added that on to the, to the injury claim. So the, the total compensation for that is $85,743. The next claim is the Michael Schmidt claim. This is for permanent injuries sustained to his back. Um, he, Mr. Schmidt uh, st stepped in a hole while he was mowing the lawn and felt two pops in his back. Um, X-rays revealed that he broke two um, vertebrae, um, a, a L3 compression fracture and an L2 anterior inferior corner fracture. Um, the fracture is equal to 7% workers compensation rating or $5,600. Um, the final claim is the James Van de Vender claim. Um, this is for permanent brain injuries sustained while performing duties. Um, Mr. Van de Vender was assaulted by another offender while he was working. Um, claimant suffered a traumatic brain injury. The rating of brain injuries under workers' compensation has multiple components, both a, a medical and sort of a, a functional component. Um, some of the functional components are difficult to determine while um, the claimant is incarcerated because of the, the, the confines of, of where he is. Um, so the, this, the, the subcommittee awarded what is sort of a, a partial um, you know, a medical minimum of what we know at this point um, will be the claim, um, and that equals $43,200. Or $43, um, unlike most claims for the subcommittee, this is not a full and final claim, um, but this is sort of pending our ability to, to gather enough evidence. Of the, Mr. Van de Vender is scheduled for release this December, um, and at that time, you know, in a subsequent subcommittee hearing, um, we'll be able to to look at the facts regarding this as to how his function is outside of the the correctional system um, and make a full and final payment. But this is, you know, both sides, um, both the Department of Corrections and the the claimant, um, you know, at, at least believe that there is this amount of of function loss. Um, and again, that that he, this is for for two separate ratings. Um, one is for mild impairment of complex cerebral function, and the other one is um, mild emotional disturbance. And those two combined equal a 36% workers' compensation rating, or again, $43,200. And Thank that you. is the, the, the claims in the, in, in the bill now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Keenley. I have a couple questions, and I'm not sure if anybody else does too, but I... Uh, Number one, I was wondering, where does the money go when it's awarded and they're still incarcerated? Do you set up a fund? I would assume there's a fund. Mr. Keenley or Senator Anderson? Madam Chair, um, these are, they're appropriated out and the, 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 how that actually functions, it, all of these are, go through um, the, Revenue recapture, so they're they're first they're sort of passed through any anything that that is owed um, to the state or other governmental entities for restitution. Those come out for, first through the Department of Revenue um, before these go out to the to the claimant. Um, as far as the timing of these things, I'm not exactly sure you know, when they get access to those if they are currently incarcerated, and that's something I can certainly find out and, and pass along to the committee. So, Mr. Kingley, if there are no debts that they have, uh, is there an account, a savings account, that's set up by the Department of Corrections for them? Madam Chair, that's I, I'm not sure exactly. Most of the claims that we end up with um, are, are paid out at, sort of shortly thereafter. Um, so, you know, I don't know in in these situations where, again, you know, the the appropriation will will kick in July 1st, um, and again for for some of these. Um, there's sort of scheduled release dates, or you know, uh, two of them are already are already out. But yes, I can I can certainly find out for for those who are uh, still incarcerated and, and and will be for a while how that is is handled. Um, thank you, Mr. Keenley. One more question, um, and perhaps Senator Anderson would like to answer this too. Um, does the subcommittee just take the recommendations from the revisers? 
um, uh, office, or do you have uh, the ability to raise or lower the amount of compensation? I know there's a rating system or recommendations, but um, how does the subcommittee work? Because we do have some new people on the finance committee, too. It, and the claims bill is usually non-controversial, so it would be nice to just understand how that operates. Well, thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Um, yes, we do have the wherewithal to accept Mr. Keenly's recommendation based on the percentages that he comes up with on workman's compensation. And the situation, uh, for give you an example, Mr. Kolke, um, Stephen Kolke, um, his permanent injuries, uh, this has been an ongoing uh, requ request from him since he's gotten out of prison. Um, but he was a carpenter before he was put into prison. And when he got into prison, he was assigned to the shop uh, where carpentry took place. And that, that was where his injury took place. Upon getting out of prison, then his left hand, uh, which if you are a carpenter, you need both hands basically to put and make uh, uh, to perform wood projects, mm -hmm. uh, putting together a house or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So in trying to get a job after he left prison, it was very difficult with just that left hand missing two fingers and then having one of the fingers cut off. And so basically he only had his thumb. And based on what Mr. Keenly had recommended, uh, the compensation for his loss was 28581 uh, The request for Mr. Uh, Colquet from his uh, lawyer, his rep representative, was over 200 and almost $250,000. We didn't think we could go that high. Uh, but we felt that we felt a little bad for it, and a recommendation from one of the members from the House was that we double the amount of money that was given as compensation, workers' compensation, and add that doubling to his uh, workers' compensation ra rating that Mr. Keenly had come up with. And that's how we come up with the 85000 We really didn't have a, a, a parameters by which we could go by, but we just we, we, we struggle with that one. I mean, I, usually most of these cases as they come forward, we accept uh, Mr. Keenly's uh, recommendation and go forward. But that one there, we just listening to the, the gentleman, he was on uh, Zoom, the virtual webinar, uh, talking to us along with his lawyer. And uh, <clears throat> I think we must have spent a half an hour uh, just because we've just felt so bad that he'd been trying to find a job, and yet with his injury to his left hand, even though his, he's probably right hand dominant, uh, the fact that he wasn't able to go back into the profession that he had had before going into prison. So we do have that discretion to make that, and uh, even though maybe Mr. Keenly doesn't, uh, but his, his, his verbiage is just a recommendation, we then make the final decision. Very good. Are there any questions? Mr. Keeley or Senator Anderson? This bill is usually non-controversial. What's that? This bill is usually non-controversial. Pretty non-controversial. No, we know, we came together. Over. Most of the claims that came out of corrections were denied, and uh, the injury claims that were brought forward uh, were pretty much unanimous in our decision, too. Uh, there was, I mean, we always have discussion, well, should we go this way, should we go that way? But we always come to a final conclusion, and we all agreed on, on most of them coming forward. So uh, some things we get we dismissed for our next claims meeting. And so uh, there's things that left uh, Mr. Keenan we'll be bringing forward as we go to the next next hearing, whenever that may be. Is 108,000, is that about the norm? With 108,000? 108,000. Is Which, that it's for the awards per year for the claims department or claims commission? The, the claims is 248000 oh, 248, Is that about normal? Uh, no, that's a little high. Mm -hmm. But there, because of the exoneration, the claim that is in there for the gentleman that was put in prison for over almost two years, uh, that brought up the money a, a lot. And then the... Um, case of these injuries that took place while they were in prison. Um, so it's, it's, I would say, just a, above the high mark, but uh, not totally out of line. Mm -hmm. well, very good. Okay. With that, I don't... Oh, Senator Marty. I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was <clears throat> wanted to follow up quickly on the exoneration thing. As you pointed out, yeah, it was close to two years in prison. Um, 
how much do we have a statutory amount that we that the exoneration act sets and if so what is it because you said that counted in attorney fees and everything madam chair i would have to defer to mr keenly on that one Madam Chair, Senator Sen Marty, uh, oh, the, Mr. there Kimmer. is a statutory minimum. Um, the, the minimum is, is $50,000 per year for while incarcerated and $25,000 um, while on probation. Um, so you know, that, that's what the, in this claim, um, that's what they, they sought. There are, there are several categories for the exoneration claims that, that, that uh, a claimant can file under um but in this in this claim um it was just for the the statutory minimum plus the attorney's fees thank you senator marty okay well very good final comments senator anderson you've got Ma madam chair no i just appreciate the opportunity to present and to hear mr keenley's remarks and questions and uh, look forward to the bill moving on to the senate floor excellent senator benson would you like to make a the motion, please. Madam Chair, I move that Senate file 2269 as amended be recommended to pass and placed on general orders. On that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails. The bill is sent to general orders. Thank you very much, Senator Thank Anderson. Thank you, Madam Good Chair. You. Thank you, members. Look forward to seeing you on the floor. Senator Ingebrigtsen, Senate file 592. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members. Uh, uh, I wish I could be with you. Uh, actually, we'll be with you next week here, uh, more on a personal, in a, in a personal uh, uh, presence. It, it seems to work better that way, for sure. I'm having some technical difficulties, but nevertheless, my my backup always works. I, I bring to you, and I know you're in a hurry. Senate File 592. Um, I will probably have Mr. Nauman go through the financials, but basically what this is is the law enforcement salary increase. I think everybody knows about that. These were these were contracts that were agreed upon by MMB, uh, and they were left out of the uh, payment, of, as you recall, uh, last year that Senator Howe had, had brought forward uh, for the state patrol. Uh, they're all included in the same, in, you know, in the same category. We have four different law enforcement state agencies. Uh, you have uh, included here is like the conservation officer. So money will be directed. Uh, and again, Mr. Nauman can, can tell you how to do that. Uh, it's going to happen out of the uh, Game and Fish Fund. Uh, you'll see some general fund money coming out for the Department of Corrections officers that get paid. Uh, and Department of Public Safety for the BCA agents that, that are included in here. And then and the Department of Commerce has investigators over there uh, that, uh, that went uncompensated uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm here to do today is to make this, basically make this right and fair uh, all across the board. Uh, uh, I don't think we have a whole lot to do with negotiating when it comes to uh, to salaries in the legislature. I think uh, MMB does all of that, uh, but nevertheless, it's a function <clears throat> that we have to do is to appropriate the money. So with that, I can turn it over to Mr. Nauman if, if uh, anybody has any questions at all uh, on the uh, the actual numbers. Uh, Mr. Nauman, can you, uh, can you help us out with that? Um, Senator Ingebrigtsen, actually, would you like your A19 amendment to be added before we turn to Mr. Turner to go through the spreadsheet? Yes, I, I would. I vote off for the A19. Senator Ingebrigtsen moves the A19. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Okay, Mr. Turner, welcome. Hey, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm going to try and share my screen here. All right, is the spreadsheet up? Yes, it is. Okay. Madam Chair and members, the spreadsheet lists the appropriations in the order in which they appear in the amendment uh, by agency, uh, uh, natural resources, corrections, public safety and commerce, and by fund. Um, and we have uh, the total cost of the bill is in the lower hand right, or the lower right corner and I'll just go through uh, by fund here. Total cost, fiscal year 21, plus 22 and 23. 
for the general fund is eight million nine hundred and twenty seven thousand uh, natural resources fund one million six hundred and seventy eight thousand uh, game and fish fund uh, five million thirty five thousand remediation fund sixteen thousand the trunk highway fund twenty three million nine hundred and eight thousand and the highway user tax distribu distribution fund at two hundred forty seven thousand uh, we have a grand total of funds of uh, 39811000 and uh, that's the spreadsheet for the bill or for the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Are there any questions, members? Madam Chair, if, if I might. Senator, um, Mr. Nauman. Uh, Madam Chair, for members, uh, I want to make sure that it's clear that this appropriation will be ongoing. So these appropriations will continue into the tail. So the, the general fund number would be uh, double the amount in 22 and 23. And similarly, uh, the 32, 9, 40 number would double in the tail. So it's roughly in the $65 million range in the tail. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nauman. Uh, Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Nauman, are these, when I look at the for the current fiscal year one, it's more than half of the others. When does it go back to, does it go back to whenever the state troopers got their raise or when does this kick in? Mr. Turner? Um, the effective date on the bill is uh, retroactive to or from October of 2020. Okay, and, and Senator Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, Mr. Turner, so that's, is that when the state patrol got their increase? Mr. Turner. Uh, I'm not sure, but I believe that's the case. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Ingerbrison, does that sound right? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, the Senator Marty, yes, that's correct. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Okay, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Madam Chair, uh, no further comments really other than the fact that, uh, um, you know, th this is, uh, what, you know, looks like a very, very large amount of money, but you know, it, it kind of, uh, kind of questions the responsibility as to how, how this comes about and, and uh, who's really responsible for it. And uh, knowing that the legislature has to, to deal with this, uh, uh, every, I think it's about every other year, I think they're two-year contracts, I'm not exactly sure on that, uh, shows that we should, be, we should be more in tune to, if we're going to be giving that, given that responsibility, we need to be on, on top of that every year. Uh, so this is, a, uh, this is including an awful lot of uh, law enforcement officers throughout the state system here, and, and uh, when you start looking at back pay like this, the number gets to be very big, but nevertheless, that's what's due to them under the contracts and, and uh, I would appreciate the support. Okay. Senator Brinkins, Ian Britson, would you like to uh, move Senate file 592 as amended and be passed to, be passed and referred to general orders? I would, Madam Chair, I would move that Senate file nine, excuse me, 592 as amended to be passed and moved uh, to uh, general orders. On that motion, members, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion prevails. The bill is sent to general orders. Thank you very much, Senator Inga Britson. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Thank you. Look forward to uh, seeing, you, seeing you again. You, well, listen, and, and also, uh, Mr. Turner, I should have known, I apologize. Uh, I should have known he'd been, he'd been my, my, uh, my right hand today, and, and I, uh, I, just, I just missed that. So uh, I apologize to to uh, Chris Turner, uh, we work together very well with the through judiciary, and, and uh, I apologize that I didn't realize that he was on. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. Absolutely, we miss you. All right. So with that, members, our hearing is concluded. We just have a couple more bills next Tuesday. Senator Duckworth's 1534, which is the Minnesota 100 Club special vehicle plates established, and then we're going to do my bill on foster care. I don't know what the number is, but with that, 
members, I see no questions. Finance Committee is adjourned. Thank you very much.